Shalom, Shalom. Of course, call Haloyim, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechal Kodash, Double Honor to the Apostles and the Elders at Great Millstone. Peace and Shalom to the Akim out there in the elect, which consists of the men, women, and children selected to make it out of here from the coming nuclear destruction. All right. I'm the brother Zayan Allah of the DC camp coming at you with another video. Basically, uh, as you can see um, on the page, all right, this is um, Huff Post, you know, unblank, all right, hospital workers given the boot after refusing blank. And you know what the blank is, as you can read, all right. And the reason why I say it like that, well, sometimes I may say sticker, all right. The reason why I say it like that is because um, I'm going to share something with you, Aki, if you Akwath. So you can see on the page, it says, um, this is my current page, Shalak La Moff, all right? But, you know, as all brothers are going through, they're going through that constant war with YouTube, on YouTube constantly uh, uh, shutting brothers' uh, sites down, their videos down, uh, leaving their pages up, but not allowing you to uh, download or upload anything to them. So it seems like there's no activity on brothers' pages. It's an ongoing war, all right? And basically, it's a war going because guess what? The men of the Lord are out there prophesying and warning the people. And they can't stand it. All right. As you can see, it says, uh, you know, blank at the shop. OK. And because of that title, you know, the title and certain words that were uh, spoken in there, of course, they used that to shut down the video. And guess what? That's an actual initiative. That blank at the shop or sticker at the shop, that's an actual initiative that, you know, our so-called, I only want to say our, I'll say, okay, the uh, the president of the United States had came up with where a thousand so-called black-owned businesses will get together to promote as well as administer, you know, the blank, as you know, all right? It's an actual initiative. And guess what? As you can see, it got cut off. All right. See, removed. It got removed. And then on top of the removal, they put, you know, uh, uh, strikes on the account to the point where I can't upload video. So I'll be on um, Shalak Lamov 2. And if I'm not on there, I'll be on three. If I'm not on there, I'll be on four. This is the battle that brothers go through. And pushing the word, but we're gonna do it, man. Because the word must continually what to be pushed out. All right. With that being said, saying, uh, staying on this topic, blank at the shop or sticker at the shop. Look at this. Unstickered hospital workers give the boot after refusing sticker. All right. Workers at Houston Methodist Hospital who refuse to get the Maxine, okay, were placed on a two-week unpaid suspension on Tuesday and faced termination. And the fact that we even bring up, look, this is an article from the Huff Post, and the fact that brothers are even bringing out this, they are canceling brothers' pages, and all we're doing is bringing out the information, all right, that we see, all right, and they're canceling our pages. You know what? Let me get this because it's been on my spirit to talk about it again. This is Hebrews 4 and 12. It says, For the word of the Most High is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And guess what? The word of the, of the Most High is quick and powerful. Okay, the word. Okay. The word is also who? Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai is the word. Okay. And it's sharper than... He sharpened into what? Any two-edged sword. All right. And I want to get this scripture. Uh, this is Amos 8 and 11. It says, Behold, the day is come, saith the Lord power, or Yahweh power, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And the whole entire scriptures are what? The words of the Lord or the words of Yahweh which is a.k.a. the word, which is Yahweh Shai. So it's going to be a famine in the land 
concerning what? Not hearing of Yahweh Shai, hearing the word. That means what the prophets, okay, that's coming on his behalf will not be out there teaching, all right, and prophesying. That is going to be a famine coming, all right? So you won't hear any more warnings of the things to come. That's the famine, all right? But just because it's a famine doesn't mean there's no food at all. It's just very, 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 very scarce, okay? Because there's going to be elect out there, all right, in different places during all hell breaking loose that the Lord is going to send his men and they're going to what? Uh, spread the word of the Lord, okay? All right, and they will be fed that bread, which we know that Yahweh Shai, what? He said that he was the bread from heaven. He is the word, okay? So guess what? The elect are going to continue to be fed, all right? But guess what? Everybody else are going to be asked out, especially those within Israel. It's not even for the other nations, but those within Israel are going to be going, well, like it says, Verse 12, and they shall wander from sea to sea. Now, when you examine the scriptures, sea is also talking about a people. Sea, a.k.a. water, waters, a.k.a. the people. And they shall wander from people to people and from the north, even to east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, which the word is Yahweh Shai. And Yahweh Shai deals with what? Prophecy. Okay. They shall seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. So these people are going to seek the prophets and what the Lord is going to what keep the prophets away from these people. And those, and those brothers, the prophets, are only going to go to a select group of people in that time to feed them. Okay? All right? And that's going to be the elect. All right? But guess what? This is this prophecy of that famine coming. That's why they keep doing things like taking down brothers uh pages man all right taking brothers pages down suspending them uh stopping uploads allowing you to cruise through your page but stopping uploads and therefore that gives the impression that you know a week or two or three goes by they're like man the brother's not putting up anything or this person's not putting up anything because their page is still up but there's no videos no they just suspended the upload all right they're doing everything in their power to stop the word from reaching you to stop the warning from reaching you because that's all we're doing as men of the Lord. We're warning you. All right. Let me go to uh, Ezekiel. All right. Ezekiel, the third chapter. It says, um, Yep. Oh, man. Uh, Ezekiel 3 and verse, um, Ezekiel 3 and verse 10. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, and we are the sons of men, so to speak, right there. We are the son of man like that. I'll say it like that. Meaning we're the prophets like Ezekiel was. All my words that I shall speak unto thee, receive in thine heart and hear with thine ears. And go, get thee to them of the captivity. Who's of the captivity? Ezekiel was during the time of Babylon. What's the Babylon now? All right, America. All right, and we guess what? We get to what the children of thy people that what are in captivity all right we do the same thing as our forefathers the prophets did we're doing it again all right and it says unto the children of thy people and speak unto them and tell them thus saith the lord power we're saying thus saith the lord power whether they will hear or whether they will forbear you see not only are we giving you the scriptures the words of the lord we're expounding on the words of the lord man not only are we giving you the prophecy, we're expounding on the prophecy, all right? Because we talk about the things like uh, pestilence, and then we expound on pestilence. We may say in the last days there will be pestilence. You know, you go to Matthew, the 24th chapter, all right, just to name one, and then we expound on what a pestilence is. So then we'll have to go into modern times today and show you what today's pestilences are to warn you, all right? It says, um, then the spirit took me up and I heard behind me a voice of a great rushing saying, blessed be the, blessed be the glory of the Lord from his place. All right, let me go further down. And it says, um, verse 17, son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel, Yasha Allah, Yaquah. Okay. 
Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Okay? All right. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. And that's the jobs of a prophet, to go out there on the highways and hedges, and it's also to put up videos to what? Warn our people that are what? Of the captivity. All right? Showing you that that's not talking about the other nations, man. All right? It's talking about a specific group of people, the Israelites, that are in captivity in Babylon. Okay? Just like in ancient Babylon and new Babylon today, the daughter of Babylon today. All right? And we're warning you of the pestilences, man. All right? And the troubles to come. All right? All right, so let me go to, um, you know, speaking of which, to stay on this particular uh, topic, because it's blank at the shop, right? And I say blank, you can read what it said, of course, because of this. Again, it says, unblank hospital workers given the boot after refusing blank. Workers at Houston Methodist Hospital who refused to get the blank vaccine, Salakia, there it goes, the blank, blank, were placed on on a two-week unpaid suspension on Tuesday and face termination, all right? This is coming, all right? You know, this is coming. Because now they're, you know, the whole thing with uh, the president trying to uh, get a certain percentage of people stickered by July 4th, all right? You know, it's a lot of pressure. They're pressuring people to get to this particular number, to get to this 70 percent by July 4th. So they're coming up with all types of uh, incentives and stuff like that. But also they're going to press to get these jobs to say, hey, this is what needs to be done. All right. And guess what? Hospital workers in Texas who refuse to get a sticker as part of company policy are now facing termination after a deadline came and went this week, prompting some workers to gather in protest, all right? Dozens of people carrying signs and waving American flags gathered outside of the Houston Methodist Hospital on Monday, some in support of the workers and others joining after their final hospital shift ended. All right, Get, read a little bit more. It says, I cried the whole way out. Nurse Jennifer Bridges, one of the 117 health care workers who recently filed a lawsuit against the hospital over its sticker requirement, told local station KHOU. All right. See, so now you got um, nurses, OK, medical staff in Houston protesting because um, they didn't take the sticker. All right. And guess what? It's been other jobs out there that's not being mentioned that have gave people a warning that this is what you will do or you will be terminated. You will take this sticker or you'll be terminated. Okay. All right. So guess what? It's going to come all over where even men of the Lord, their situation may change, but guess what? That's okay. All right. That's okay. Cause we have the name of the Lord to call upon. Let me uh, get this, um, Get Proverbs, okay? This is Proverbs 18 and 10. It says the name of the Lord, Yahweh, because when you look up Lord, is Yahweh, okay? Is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe, you see? The name of the Lord, Yahweh, Bashim Shai, is a strong tower because whenever we pray to Yahweh, we do it in the name of Yahweh Shai. Essentially, we're to pray to Yahweh Shai first. Because we don't skip Yahweh Shai and get to the Heavenly Father. That's how big Yahweh Shai is to us, man. Okay? Since the name of Yahweh Shai is a strong tower, the righteous runneth into it and is safe. You see that? As long as we're doing the will of Yahweh Shai, okay, and we're calling upon a name, then guess what? We will be delivered. And guess what? Yahweh Shai means what? He deliverer. He savior. All right? That's why it's important to pray to Yahweh, to Yahweh, what? Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, in the name of Yahweh Shai. 
Okay, because Yahweh Shai has been set up to be the deliverer. Okay. And when we pray to Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai is the one in turn, you know, asking the Heavenly Father, you got me on these men right here. You see that? So that's why it's important to pray to Yahweh Shai, and which in turn is praying to the Heavenly Father Yahweh. Remember, Yahweh Shai is to be worshipped. Don't look at these other groups saying that he's not to be worshipped. He is to be worshipped. All right. Let's get that real quick. This is Colossians 1 and verse um, 17. Matter of fact, verse um, 14, in whom we have redemption through his blood. I just jumped to this point so you know who this is talking about. Even the forgiveness of sins, and that's Yahweh Shai. We have redemption through his blood, his blood that was shed on the cross, on the tree. It said, who is the image of the invisible power? He's the image. He's the express image of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. Okay? The firstborn of every creature. He's the chosen. He's the first created and chosen of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Okay, what? He may have the first, in meaning what, what preeminence? He may have the first. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell, meaning what? All the mercy, all right, all the mercy of the Heavenly Father was put on Yahweh Shai. All the mercy and grace was put on Yahweh Shai. That's why we ought to pray to Yahweh Shai and go through to Yahweh Shai. He's the mediator. Okay? All right? So we worship Yahweh Shai and pray to Yahweh Shai to get in grace with the Heavenly Father Yahweh. Okay? Our nation already tried as a nation to deal with the Heavenly Father Yahweh and couldn't do it. So we needed a mediator. We needed a bigger sacrifice, man, who was always there, by the way. But guess what? It was time for him to be glorified and elevated when he came to uh, sacrifice himself on the cross for us, man. All right. Let me um go back. Because these things are coming, you know, these these things are coming. All right. But we have the name of the Lord to call upon. All right. It says the medical center's 26,000 employees had given, been given until Monday to get the sticker. Those who failed to do so would be suspended for two weeks without pay starting on Tuesday. So if you're suspended without pay for two weeks, you know, people basically get paid every two weeks. So if you're suspended without pay for two weeks, now you have to work another two weeks just to get caught up. And then you're behind two weeks because guess what? You lost two weeks. All right. So they're trying to get people what financially. All right. Which is going to turn a lot of people in that direction to taking the sticker. All right. By hitting their pockets, which is why I'm doing this video. Like many other brothers, like, don't worry about that. Do not worry about that. The heavenly father got us. That's why I'm expressing the name of the Lord. All right. Let me get this, uh, matter of fact, let me get the other one because it's easier to access it faster. All right. That's why it's important to call upon the name, you know, as you're doing the works. All right. What is the Sirach? Sirach 2 and 10. Look at the generations of old and see did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded. Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? See, that's why I wanted to get this uh, point too. Because brothers always get this scripture, all right? But it says what? It says, did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded? Was what? Uh, confused, brought to a low estate. Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Because guess what? We have to abide in his fear. It's not just uh, um, calling on a name just because you have the name. Esau has the name. Some of the other nations have the name. The difference is we have the faith. All right. So we have to have the faith in fear. It says, who, or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? 
did he turn away from uh, the men of old that truly feared and, and loved him? All right. Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? So there's, there's a list of things there. The ones that called upon uh, upon him, Salakia, for being jumbled up in my words. The ones that called upon him that also what? Feared him and trusted him. That's a lot in verse 10. All right. The ones that had his name called upon him that also what? Feared him and trusted in him. All right. It says, for the Lord is full of compassion and mercy and long suffering and very pitiful and forgiveth sins and saveth in time of affliction. And it's funny because um, Yahweh Shai said that. And as a matter of fact, let me see if I can find that scripture. Rise. He just hit me in the spirit, man. Look at, look, that man, that's why it's important to pray to Yahweh Shai, man. All right. This is um. This is um. Uh, yeah, this is Luke five, and eighteen. And behold, men brought in a bed a man which was taken with a palsy, and they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before him. And when they could not find, by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went upon the housetop, and let him down through the tilling, which his couch or the toweling uh, with his couch into the mist before Yahweh Shai. Okay. Matter of fact, let me do this real quick. Okay. All right. It says, um, verse 20. And when he saw their faith, he said unto him, man, thy sins are forgiven thee. Now, mind you, this, this, um, man before he was healed, he was what? It said that what? He was uh, taken with the palsy. All right. It's a disease. Now let's go look up palsy. It's an affliction, so to speak, man. All right. Taken with the palsy, feeble, feeble, sick, sick of the or with the palsy. Okay. And it almost looks like a form of paralysis because it says uh, paralio. All right. Strong's G thirty eight eighty six, Paraluo, Paraluo, Paraluo. Okay, so basically weak, weak of limbs. See that? Weak in limbs, some form of paralysis. Okay, and it says, um, verse twenty again. And when he saw their faith, he said unto him, Man, thy sins are forgiven thee. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this? which speaketh blasphemies. Who can forgive sins but the Most High alone? But when Yahweh shall perceive their thoughts, he answered, said unto them, answering said unto them, What reason ye in your hearts? Whether it is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Rise up and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man have power upon earth to forgive sins, he said unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise and take up thy couch and go unto thy house. And immediately he rose up before them and took up that whereon he lay and departed to his own house, glorifying Yahweh. You see that? And guess what? He had faith that Yahweh Shai was going to heal him. And Yahweh Shai said, what? Rise up and walk. But before that, before he said, arise and take up thy couch, he said, thy sins be forgiven thee. That's why we ought to pray to Yahweh Shai. Like, hey, uh, Yahweh Shai, Babaku Shai, Salakia, you know, forgive me for my sins, man. You know, Yahweh Shai, Shai, forgive me for my sins. And in turn, you can be forgiven for your sins. But guess what? You can be saved from your affliction. Because this this uh, individual who was sick of the palsy, he had an affliction on him. And yet believing on Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai healed him. Same thing again. We're telling you all to believe in the names of Yahweh Hashem Shai, so in the time of your affliction, you can be delivered out of it, no matter what it is, whether it's a disease, whether it's losing your job, what, no matter what it is, man, thrown in a concentration camp, because those times are coming, no matter what it is, no matter what the affliction is, we call on the name of Yahweh Hashem Shai, and he can deliver us from it, right? 
Verse 11 again, for the Lord is full of compassion and mercy and long suffering and very pitiful and forgive of sins and saveth in time of affliction, no matter what the affliction is, man, as long as we believe on the Lord. Man. It says, um, verse five, for gold is tried in the fire. We're going to be tried. We're going to be proved. We're going to be tested. Okay. We're going to with that fire. All right. The fire that's coming from this truth, man. Okay. All right. We're going to be tried with things of the spirit, man. Okay. Also trials and tribulations, man. The heat that's coming. For gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Believe in him and he will help thee. Order thy way aright and trust in him, which links up with verse 10. As we read before, we have to order our ways aright and we have to trust in him. It says, ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy, wait for his grace, okay? And go not aside, lest ye fall. We got to wait for it, and we're not supposed to stray away from it, or we're going to fall. Ye that fear the Lord, believe him, and your war shall not fail. We're going to be delivered, man. All right? This is just a test and a trial that we are going to go through. Some of us are going to go through this, man. It's knocking on the door, okay? It's knocking on the door. You have to get this. You have to get that. You have to get this. And this is all a precursor to what? The MOB, the mob. Okay? All right? The MOTB. All right? It's a precursor to that. All right? And, that, and then during that time, it's really going to kick up. All right? I'm going um, to get, uh, I'll get one more uh, scripture. Let me see if there's any more. It says, um, let me read this paragraph again. The, the medical center's 26,000 employees have been given until Monday to get the um, sticker. Those who failed to do so would be suspended for two weeks without pay starting on Tuesday. Those workers now have until June 21st to get stickered or they will be terminated. The hospital told its staff in a policy statement back in April. All right. Employees can request to be exempt from sticker, all right, from being stickered for medical reasons, including pregnancy and sincerely held religious beliefs, the hospital has said, which when they put, uh, um, what is it? Uh, what is it? What is it, man? What are, I'm tripping quotation marks. Damn. I was tripping. I was about to say hypothesis and all this other stuff. When they put quotation marks around Sincerely held religious beliefs. There's been talks on that as well. Okay. Because they said they don't want people out there to just make up some religion. All right. So what are they telling us that they're going to have an approved set of religions? All right. That you can only follow. You see that? All right. They have their own little traps set up coming. But people say, well, I don't believe in out. Well, which religion you in? Then they're going to be like, well, I've never heard of that. That's not documented. Therefore, we're not allowing that. You see, they're going to control what type of religion you're in, man. All right. Which shows you these other religions in the spirit. It shows you these other religions. All right. Have nothing to do with the heavenly father, man. All right. It says. Um, Any approved exemption would only be valid for the year it was approved. <laughs> you see that? So there's a time limit on that particular exemption, only that year. But the next year, you have to do it again, like your religion is going to change or something. You see? But this is the devil for you. All right? Let me go to uh, my last scripture. This is, um, what is that? James. This is James 1. Verse 12, it says, blessed is the man. OK, that endureth temptation. And that's going to that word. I went into this before. Cause temptation is not just talking about sin. All right. Let me look up endureth to remain, abide. All right. To endure uh, barely, bravely, bear bravely and calmly. See, bear bravely and calmly suffer. OK. All right. Remain, that's a key word. So blessed is the man that remained, 
endured, you know, temptation, remained during the temptation, okay, endured through the temptation. The temptation, I should have stayed there, but it's all good. The temptation is um right here, an experiment, attempt, trial, proving, all right? The trial of man's fidelity or faith, integrity, faith, virtue, constancy, an enticement to sin, temptation, whether arising from the desires or from the outward circumstances. All right. And the scripture talks about how we're not supposed to make any cuttings in our flesh. But these people are scared that if they don't get this particular thing, which involves getting cut into your flesh, that they're going to lose everything. All right. Look at that. That's the other part I wanted to get other than uh, temptation. All right. It says um, adversity, affliction, trouble sent by Yahweh by Shema Shai and serving to test or prove one's character, faith or holiness. OK, because you can be put in a troubling situation to test your faith as well. Not just sin. All right. Being enticed to sin. Temptation, it can also mean what? Um, putting you in trouble, all right? To what? Let me see if he's going to lose his faith. That, that's, what, that's what the test was, the trial was, and uh, concerning Job. He said, you know, have you considered my servant Job? Let's test him out, right? And guess what? He put all types of hell on him, took away things, took away his children, all right? Like put them to death, you see? These are all the troubles that are happening. Another trouble in these times, that's what you can see. That blank blank in the article we was reading. All right. So at the end of the day, as long as we keep Yahweh Shmuel Shai first and in everything and to include his program, everything written, as long as we keep that first, all right, we'll be good with faith. We'll be good, man. All right. Call Haloyim Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakal Kodash. And as always to the elect. Double shalom.